Welcome everyone to Straight Shoot, a wrestling podcast. Guess what everybody, the inmates are running the asylum again, the warden is still away, I have Heel Kev back for a third time. Kev, what is going on my dude? Hey man, I told you, we, we saw it in the comments, we saw it on, 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 on TikTok, on Twitter, they want Heel Kevin to be the first five time, five time, five time, five time, one, two, three, four, five time special guest on the straight shoot. I'm here for it, man. I love being here talking wrestling with you. Looking forward to what we're going to get into tonight. Thank you so much for having me back. It's always a blast to uh, sit here and bounce ideas off of you. And I had a great time last time and uh, the, the audience seemed to really like it. So Hopefully we can uh, deliver some magic again. But yes, the inmates are definitely running the asylum. Santi gave us way too much freedom. He's probably <laughs> rethinking it now, but uh, we're here. Hey, listen, man. Um, going over the analytics from our first two videos, dude, I, I, I'm I not going to complain. I, I think we did some phenomenal business. It was what was best for business at that time. Um, we did some great stuff. We talked about some good things. Uh, I am looking forward to tonight's uh podcast because honestly dude i think it's going to be a little bit more serious tonight um but before we get into the top one of the key topics of the show Mm -hmm. i need to go through the rest of the straight shoot analytics guys first off i really appreciate everyone supporting straight shoot um the twitter growing the uh, Spotify and the rest of the podcast, the YouTube. Listen, we are on a bit of a hiatus for the content between me and Santi. Um, it is a, it has nothing to do with any bad blood with me and Santi. Uh, contrary to what the comments are saying, it's just a little bit of difficulty with some personal stuff going on. Um, and it will all be back to normal come June. Triple the amount of content on YouTube. We are going to be on Apple Podcasts come the start of June. Six times the amount of content on TikTok. We're going to be doing five to six videos a day. And we are also launching the merch. Kev, I know you're the first person going to be jumping on one of those straight shoe hoodies. Um, but well, I'm in li- Georgia, so I don't know about a hoodie, but I'm definitely going to get a shirt and cut the sleeves off because your boy's looking jacked. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you your look- boy's getting yoked. You look like you slimmed down a little bit from the last video. But listen. Uh, I, just, I skipped a bag of chips. But that, that, that'll change. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> so let's give a shout out. You guys know I love giving my shout outs every week when it comes to the people listening to the podcast on Spotify, Google, Amazon, across the country. Well, not even across the country. Across the planet. We have... Willindara Lakes, New South Wales, Australia. We see you. This is genuinely, if you look this shit up on a mat, there is like one lake in the middle of the outback and it is right next to that lake. All right. We have Kuwait. What up, Kuwait? All right. <laughs> I know that guy. No, I you legit know who it is. Do you? Shout out to Mr. Midwest from the Heel Kevin Army who came over to the straight shoot. He's in the Air Force right now, currently stationed in Kuwait, listens to all your shit. Yo, what up? Too sweet, my bro. Thank you for all the love. We have Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. So, obviously, we know we got a lot of wrestling fans over in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Um, Here's one I didn't think we would ever get considering the current global circumstances. We have Moscow, Russia. We got a blip in Moscow. So, hey, listen, I might not be a fan of everything going on right now, but what up, Moscow? That's all I'm saying (laughs) when it comes to wrestling. And then the final one that I found amazing was La Paz, Bolivia. What the hell? Like we got, I I saw a blip come up in Colombia, and I was like, well, that's Santi. Nobody else in Colombia is like paying attention to us. But we got La Paz, Bolivia. So everybody listening on the podcast, thank you so much globally. You guys are making Santi and myself, and even Heo Kev here, who comes in and joins us every now and again. Love what we do. Uh, don't forget to go follow Heel Kev. All his information will be right down below uh, when this recording is posted. 
Um, I was just going to say, everybody who's come over to my YouTube and my TikTok and they leave the comment, I saw you on the straight shoot. I see you guys. I appreciate you guys. So not only thank you to Steve and Santi for allowing me to have a seat on the show temporarily or filling in, whatever the case may be, but thank you guys for coming over and continuing to watch my content. Thank you guys. If you come over from the straight shoot, leave a comment saying you found me on straight shoot. And let's have a talk. Let's have a discussion. Tell me your favorite straight shoot show and we can go back and forth. Exactly, dude. Um, so I don't want to dive very much into Dynamite, but I know you watched it. Yeah. And you have a very strong opinion on Dynamite tonight. Um, I'm going to let you run with this because I only saw, um, what's his name now? Uh, Johnny Elite debut yeah. uh so let's just debut with the company name why not the it's most like most likely like john doe at this point but go ahead kev give her well i mean it's happened everywhere he's been he was johnny impact and impact he was johnny mundo and lucha underground now he's johnny elite um i mean it's kind of become his thing to change his name according to where he's at uh but as far as dynamite goes so if anybody's curious it is now uh wednesday the 18th as of recording this uh, we just watched uh, the episode of Dynamite with um, Adam Cole versus Jeff Hardy, Ward those 10 lashes, all that good stuff. Guys, I'm a massive AEW fan. Let me get that out of the way. I'm a wrestling fan. I like all brands of wrestling from the independents to the major promotions. Tonight's AEW was dog shit. Tonight's AEW was dog. You can film five episodes of Botchamania based off what happened tonight. You got Britt Baker... And um, I know this isn't the way you pronounce your name, but but Macchiato or Maki, Makito or whatever. I think it's um, Makito, yeah. Her former tag partner, she comes out and she lays down because this is uh, the, the Owen Hart tournament uh, quarterfinals. She lays down as if Britt's going to give her the pin. She lays down, Britt bends over. She goes to hook the small package roll up and completely botches it. How do you botch the first, how do you botch a roll up? let alone not even in a transition of a move, just out, you, you literally hook the neck, hook the leg, and roll. It was completely botched. You had the Young Bucks. Question, hold uh, up, hold up, hold up. Was this worse or better than Stone Cold's broken neck roll-up on Owen Hart? On par. It was rough, dude. Continue, it was rough. continue. You got the Young Bucks um, standing on either side of Sting, uh, at the end of the main event, like they're going to both super kick one of his ears, aiming for the side of his head. They both super kicked him in the shoulder. I know Sting's a little bit of a taller guy. Um, the BTE trigger was way off. You had mishaps between the Blackpool Combat Club, Eddie Kingston and uh, Brian Danielson. Um, really, the, the shining star of the show, and guys, this is just my opinion. We don't have to agree. That is perfectly fine. Uh, so let me preface this by saying just my opinion. Uh, the bright star of the show was Wardlow taking the 10 lashes, which ended up being about 25 lashes because he no-sold. And when I mean no-sold, I mean stone face, no squint, no nothing, just no-sold the shit out of the first eight lashes. Tensed up on the ninth one. And then instead of doing the 10th lash, MJF kicks him in the nards. He falls and he just unloads with that leather strap. So it ended up being about 25, but Wardlow looked amazing. Wardlow looked like a million bucks. Wardlow looks like he's going to be a threat uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, they're priming him to be a big baby face, and I could see it happening. Um, I like what they're doing with Wardlow, and they're building him up properly, in my opinion. Uh, but you take out Wardlow and MJF, and that's another thing. It had MJF in it, so how could it be bad? Um, you take that away, and the, the, the show is awash. This week is one of the only weeks where I'll say Monday Night Raw was better than AEW Dynamite. And here's one thing I'm going to say right now. This this podcast is called Straight Shoot for a reason. We shouldn't have to cover what we're saying as our opinion because it's straight shooting. If you don't understand and you are not a strong enough wrestling fan to allow people to have their opinions, this is straight shoot. If you don't like it, too bad. Anyways, so... Hearing that, I thought Raw for myself was one of uh, the better over the last couple of weeks. Uh, minus our topic of the show, Kev. And I'm going to call it um, 
the domestic disturbance in the back. Can I say one thing before we get into that? Yeah, let's go. The only other thing that I don't really like about Raw is the constant need to shove Cody Rhodes down our fucking throat. Ooh, hey, if when, you if you hold on, if you guys need to see our opinion on Cody Rhodes and how much Cody Rhodes we are getting, go check out last week's YouTube video, which is going to be in the description and at the end of this video, and check out what we truly have, what Santi and I believe is the issue with Cody Rhodes. And Kev, you can have your, your time on what your opinion on Cody Rhodes is. I mean, I know we got a lot to get into tonight. We're crunching time, so I'm going to make this quick. When's the last time we had somebody on Raw for two weeks in a row now at 10 o'clock, you're getting Cody Rhodes. 10 o'clock, Cody Rhodes versus Austin Theory. They had the Cody countdown timer in the corner of the screen the entire time. The Cody countdown. Cody Rhodes is on, and I'm a Cody fan. Yeah, I am a Cody fan. Let me let me go and say that. Um, but Cody Rhodes' face is all over SmackDown promos yep. for SmackDown advertisements. The man's never been on SmackDown since he's come back. Why is he on SmackDown? You got your head at the table. You got your bloodline. Put them on the promo. We're interested in them. You don't need to put Cody on SmackDown. No. Like, I get it. He's your first guy to come over from AEW, which he returned from AEW. I get it. But he became a global superstar with the stuff he did outside of WWE. Uh, but I feel like they're overdoing it. I feel like they're constantly shoving him down our throats. As much of a Cody fan as I am, I'm starting to not look as forward to Cody Rhodes as I have been in the past. And I would really like to see them stop shoving him down our throat. However, I am very excited to see this upcoming Hell in a Cell with him and Seth Rollins. But guys, let, let's cool it with Cody. You don't need to shove him down our throat. We're already going to watch. We're all, we already like him. We are, we're already invested. They've done a good job with these last two matches. I'm invested. You don't have to constantly just jam it down my throat. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think Santi and I covered that last week. Uh, and it was, it was reading between the lines on what was coming. Uh, but let's get to this week. And I was going to say the domestic, but I'm going to say more of the proverbial. And we saw this with Austin and Brock Honor. back in the day. Austin taking his ball and going home. But this one, Kev, I'm just going to say this. This is a very interesting situation. Sasha Banks and Naomi. Obviously, they show up uh, eight hours before showtime. Mm -hmm. They're given their time to kind of get the idea of what their main event, main event on Monday Night Raw is going to be. And the main event was going to be uh, Becky Lynch, Asuka, uh, Naomi, Sasha, and uh, Piper Nevitt. We do not call her Dewdrop. And uh, Nikki A.S.H. Yes. For a number one contender spot for Bianca Belair's Raw Women's title. Let's think about this for a second. How many past women's world champions are in this match? Everyone except for Piper. Exactly. Okay. Here's my first problem. Secondly, Sasha Banks is notoriously known for wanting a little bit more creative control. And I am not, before you guys start shooting on me in the comments, that I am not saying this is all Sasha Banks. I don't care what Sean Ross says. I don't give a shit what that other guy says because I don't acknowledge him. And y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm going to read the statement. Because when was the last time you heard about backstage news coming out sounding like it's part of the storyline? Mm -hmm. When Sasha Banks and Naomi arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE Head of Talent Relations John Laurinaitis office with their suitcases in hand placed their tag team championship belts on the desk and walked out they claimed they weren't respected enough as tag team champions and even though they had eight hours to rehearse 
and construct their match. They claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret we were unable to deliver as advertised tonight's main event kev do you want this for a minute go ahead you you good with that yeah take it okay so let's start off with that that final part we're sorry that we weren't able to deliver as advertised did they just do an entire uh like like little feud with adam pierce and roman reigns not too long ago about how every card says card subject to change what happened to that Okay, it's very simple. Card subject to change. Stuff happen. Life happens all the time. I mean, look at this show, for example. You and Santi have been apart. Life happens. Life gets in the way. It, it was it was a very simple. Hey, something came up. We had to change it. But no, you decided to take a huge elephant dart to the business and expose. At, they had eight hours to rehearse. They didn't like their opponent. Like why? You are actively just shitting on the business. Stop it. Just stop. Um, a little bit more deeper into that statement. Um, they, they felt they weren't being respected as tag team champions, as tag team wrestlers. Um, now, given given the assumption that what we, we just read is the truth, because I'm a big believer in everybody is going to be the hero of their own story. Whoever tells their story, they're going to be made to look like the good guy. There's his side, her side, and then there's the truth. Yep. There's three sides to every story. So given, let's assume that what we heard is the truth, okay? I'm team Sasha and Naomi all the way. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a lot of heat over this this past week. And I want to focus on what they said. They're not being respected as tag team champions because um, it is led to believe that Naomi was going to go over and feud with Bianca. Over on SmackDown, Sasha was going to be the next in line to feud with Ronda Rousey. And they were going to go and they were going to do things for the women's championships. This is the second time that... Sasha Banks has been a tag team champion. And the second time that she was told the tag team championships are going to be placed on the back seat. When you look at everything that these ladies have done for these titles, and I'm not just talking about their title reign, because let's be honest here. We talked about this last time I was on the show. WWE has taken a massive step back from the women's uh, revolution that they did. These tag titles go all the way back to that. Because without the four horsewomen, without what they did in NXT, without the revolution, there are no tag team titles. So now that they have them, they're putting in the work. They're putting in, uh, they're they're putting in the work to make these things relevant, or at least try to. And yet they're being told these little titles you have, they're never going to be as important as these other two. We're going to push you in the direction of. They want to focus on these tag titles. They want to build the tag division. They want to make it a serious, relevant title. And you can't be mad at that. On top of that, I hear everybody saying, "Oh, Naomi needs to turn on Sasha." and join the bloodline. That'll do the best for her. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But who's to say that Naomi wants that? Who's to say Naomi wants to be referred to as the woman in the bloodline? Maybe Naomi wants to be the greatest women's wrestler of all time. Not saying she is, but she could be. She's stacking up a very good pedigree. She's gotten way better than she was when she first started. I remember when she made the return against uh, Natalia, and we seen her do that running, standing Hurricane Rana for the first time on the ramp. Blew me away. Yeah. Who's to say that she wants that. Maybe they want to elevate these tag titles and they're being told no matter how much work you put in, no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, these will never be as important as these other two championships we have. And I got, I'm going to make this reference again and I got heat for it before. I'm sure I'm going to get heat for it last time. I'm open for the debate, guys. I check the comments just as much as everybody else does. I'm open for the debate. What they're doing right now, I see very similar parallels to what The Miz did on Talking Smack with the Intercontinental Championship. Now, did The Miz walk out? No. But he took liberties to go on Talking Smack and, and, and voice his grievances. How are these similar? Here's how. You have two champions, Sasha Banks, and you have The Miz. Both sitting champions. Both felt their titles were being disrespected. Both felt their titles deserved to be more in the forefront. And they did what they had to do or what they felt they had to do to bring eyes to the titles and try to make them more relevant. Nobody had an issue with 
what the Miz did, and I get it. He didn't walk out. You don't have to beat that point to death. <clears throat> but when you feel like you're being dealt a forced hand, you got to do what you got to do. I am 100%. If what this statement says is true, because I'm a firm believer in unless you were next, unless you were standing next to Sasha Banks and Naomi the entire night up until they walked out, you have no idea what happened. Because WWE's never lied to us. They've never done false statements. They've never done any of that shit. Let, let's be honest here. Nobody tells the 100% truth. As much as we like to say we do, nobody does. Are, are, so, are, are you being sarcastic there? No, I'm being dead, dead serious. Okay, because I'm, I'm about to shoot on you right now then. Because okay, there's, okay, a, there's well, another part in this that we have never, never seen in a statement from WWE. Where we say, Monday Night Raw is a scripted yeah. TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. When was the last time, Kev, you saw WWE admit that they, yes, they are sports entertainment. But the word scripted is rarely, if ever, used in professional wrestling. You're absolutely right. So, my next question and my point on this, and if people want to come at me, I don't care. Because this is Straight Shoot, a wrestling podcast. And this is what we do. We shoot. This is a fucking work all day. Every day of the week. WWE is not going to... Well, let's look what they've just done. Let me track back. Elias and Ezekiel. Ezekiel's... Or, sorry, Elias's younger brother, Ezekiel. WWE.com, their Instagram, their Twitter are putting forth this weird new form of working an angle Mm -hmm. of their social media showing Ezekiel and Elias together, Ezekiel having his own Twitter account and all this kind of stuff. I feel that this is a new angle and a new way that WWE wants to sell their product via the social media side of things. And if you're going to put through a whatever a statement normally when they put through a statement they put like a whoever wrote the statement at the bottom they normally put like a corporate stamp if you actually go look at the statement and i'm looking at it at wwe.com all it has is the wwe emoji which i have on my twitch channel so for me yes okay We have all recognized that since the Iconics, the WWE women's tag titles have been pretty much completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Naomi and Sasha Banks should not be carrying the women's tag titles. Simple as this. I have said this since day one. There's no reason for them. It is just filler for two very, very good performers arguably first ballot hall of famers to be relevant at wrestlemania and now they have no storyline for them so where i'm at right now is is sasha taking her ball and going home and dragging naomi with her or is this a work saying there's some collusion or some discrepancy between the back room and these two very good performers that are now going to go rogue and say, you know what? Fuck you. We deserve to be in the women's title position. And these titles don't mean shit. And they're saying what the fans have been saying for months. Like, is this, is this one of those? Am I, am I way off, off kilter on this? No, I don't think you are. Um, there are definitely aspects in this that point to it being a work. Um, when I was watching it, as you know, on my Twitch channel, I do watch longs for every single uh, wrestling event. As I'm watching it, and I first heard Adam Pierce say they walked out when he was talking to Becky, I instantly thought work. When does that ever happen? Never. When in the middle of a show do they say, oh, yeah, we had two people just quit on us? They don't do that. I instantly thought I thought they were never there. 
I thought, oh, they never showed up. They're just doing that to like further this Oscar and Becky bullshit or whatever. Um, I instantly thought work. Um, but as you know, to to kind of like feed both sides of the coin, I entertain the idea of it being a work. I entertain the idea of it being a shoot. Um, the only other point I was going to make, if it is a shoot, um, something else that I've said in the past was WWE has been known for a long time to cut corners by labeling their employees independent contractors. The FCC has labeled an 11 point checklist to define exactly what an independent contractor is and what they are allowed to do. Stop working and leaving a job site for any reason at any time is number seven on that 11 point checklist. So if you want to label them independent contractors, don't get mad when they start acting like independent contractors. But like I said, I see both sides of the coin of it being a work or a shoot. I immediately got the feeling of a work, but I also entertained the idea of it being a shoot as well. What told me it was a work was when Becky Lynch said to Adam Pierce right before that commercial break, I think it was segment four or segment five. I can't remember right before they went into the, uh, it was actually short be- shortly before Cody. Um, it was Becky at backstage saying, Sasha and Naomi walked out. They walked out. They walked out. It should just be me and Oscar, or it should just be me going for the... I'm like... Hold on a sec. Kind of shoving this down our throats, huh? You're making us talk about this now. This is what you want us to talk about. So, at the end of the day, we know Sasha's very opinionated. She doesn't need WWE anymore. She could go to Hollywood and do her thing with Star Wars and get any gimmick that she pretty much wants. She still loves pro wrestling, but she knows she deserves to be higher up on the card. Are If they're trying to play the proverbial Stone Cold taking his ball and going home, they've done a fucking piss poor job of doing it, man. Especially considering that both their husbands still work for the company. Yeah, 100%. Like, like do, you, do you think for one second if this was an actual shoot, if Naomi wouldn't have at least called her husband and be like, hey... I know you're like one of the top guys and this could probably have some backlash on you. What do you think I should do? And I could see it if it was just Sasha. If it was just Sasha who walked out. But I could see it. Even but that, that Mika- Sasha and Naomi. Even that Mikazi's not leaving. He's got a gold mine because he creates virtually seventy percent of the roster's gear. Mm-hmm. Like, you could actually say, like, okay, she's under a, what, a $1.24 million contract a year? Something around there. If if you, I, I could pull it up if you want. But Mikazi's making easily half that for his creative on all the gear. So Mikazi doesn't want to lose his fucking dinner. No. For his wife's ego i'm saying seven out of ten work and we're gonna see more storyline coming up in the next couple of weeks with sasha coming back you know maybe tail between her legs or maybe like denim black leather jacket you know like almost scott hall style coming in and being like listen i'm fed up with this garbage Give me what I want. Batista, give me no, what I want. I just that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I man. see Sasha saying, you know what? Forget those titles. Let Piper and Nikki Ash and whomever go after those titles. You know, put Carmella and Dana Brooke together, even though they're about to feud. But just give someone else truly mid-card. the opportunity to make those titles relevant but at this point sasha and naomi need to be separated and i think this is the way they've all sat down in a meeting saying sunday before raw and it's like you know what we need to do it different but it can't be too obvious and maybe we're reading between the lines and everybody knows wrestling is scripted whatever I don't care, but... Yeah, WWE just told us all that. 
Yeah, literally in your uh, three paragraph statement. Mon- fix is in, kids. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show. That's the one that killed me. Scripted live TV show. So, Kev, are we in consensus here that this is a work? Or are we st- are we still on the fence? Let's go. Like, are we still on the fence? I mean, I think you just said, what, 7 out of 10 is a work for you? You're at that 70% of a work? Mm. I think that's a realistic thing. Like I said, I, I entertain the idea just because of Sasha taking time off uh, last uh, WrestleMania when they lost the tag titles. There's very similar parallels to when she did it then. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say right around that 70, 60, 70% marker, um, more leaning towards a work. Yeah. Just because of how much it was thrown at us, the fact that they said it's a scripted show, um, and I didn't even think about Becky until you brought it up, but now that you introduced that in there, it, it leans more toward work. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a shoot, but I'm leaning more towards a work. Yeah, and honestly, like if it is, I look forward to what they're going to build off this because for Naomi, at least, and for me, like <laughs> maybe I'll get over it with a lot more fans on this, but like with Naomi... She is actually a quality performer. Mm -hmm. For me, it's always been about character development. And she's getting to that point of maturity with character development where, okay, I know a lot of people on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitch have said, Naomi is technically not blood. Married in blood does not count as part of the bloodline. But we're also talking about WWE. Yeah. Would yeah. you be okay with Naomi in the bloodline? Yes or no? Yes. Are we, okay, are we okay with Rhea Ripley in Judgment Day? Oh my god. Do you even Hold on. I'm not done. I'm not done. Are we okay with Liv Morgan throwing up the too sweet no. with the club? No. You're not okay with that? No. Oh, you piece of garbage. I was going somewhere <laughs> with this because I love it because it's my girl, Liv. Like, like, what's wrong with Liv? Hold on. What's wrong with Liv? She's not believable. When you, when you, have, when you have drawn light, there is no way there is no believable fashion when you have lines drawn as clearly between two uh factions or teams as you do with judgment day and aj you look at aj and and um you look at aj and edge and they 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 can lock horns pretty evenly you look at balor and damian they lock horns pretty evenly there is no world in under any circumstance where you will ever get me to believe that Liv Morgan stands a chance against Rhea Ripley. No, uh, fair enough, but we're also looking at professional wrestling. We are, we are. And just, just, just remember. She's the oddball e- out. Hold on, just remember. Emma was at one point at a short time in the Bullet Club. So you cannot say... You cannot say <laughs> Liv Morgan is not believable, bro. It was Emma. She's the... Okay, but we're, we're talking about here, we're talking about now, and we're talking about... We're talking about AJ Styles, Ring of Honor, Impact, New Japan, WWE, everywhere there's been to go. You look at Finn Balor, everywhere there's been to go. Seasoned, traveled vets who 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 are masters of their craft. And then you got... Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan, who is probably the most over female wrestler that is getting absolutely no opportunity. Ah. Come on, let's go. You want to shoot? Ah. Let's shoot. What's wrong? When I made when I when I made my sound. Okay, listen. When I made my sound effect, when I did the ah, I, I my audio cut off the last thing you said, and I think that might have saved your point for me. What were you gonna say in full? I said Liv Morgan, who is quite arguably one of the most over-face female wrestlers 
in WWE right now that everybody wants to see get that opportunity and that true opportunity because they're getting sick of the four horsewomen in Becky and and Charlotte. So people need to move in. Give tell me right now, Lacey Evans is not over. She is this this is bullshit dramatic. Great start. Okay. It was a great start. It was a great start and now whatever. Oscar still needs a manager. To actually help her cut a promo. She can perform in the ring. Rhea has Judgment Day. Okay, we have that. But she's straight heel. Okay. Bianca is getting boring. And I've said this for months. And I said it was going to happen. And I said the fans were going to turn on her. And it's happening already. Who else on the Raw roster can come out and take the title? So I'm going to agree with you, and I'm going to tell you why. Because you've narrowed it down to such a niche group. On Raw, babyface, over but not being pushed. When you add all those things in together, you're kind of like limiting yourself down to like two people maybe. If you would have said in the company, I would have thrown Shotzi Blackheart right at you. Nope. But because you said Raw, Shotzi's way better than, than Liz. No, I, I'm, I'm agreeing that Shotzi's oh, okay, good. Okay, okay, no, okay, I, okay. but Shotzi is the anti-face but she is still a face yeah she's the anti-face she's that randy orton face she's the randy orton face she fits in that rhea ripley uh kind of thing that lita kind of thing back in the day like she fits in that new mold but we are strictly talking the raw women's title okay then yes i i I would agree with you when you when you put it that way and you put everything there i would agree but i i just so how does Liv not fall into Getting into a, a women's... Ooh, what do we have coming up? Money in the bank. How does she not fall into that opportunist list? I mean, she she absolutely does. But if she does get it, I see her being very similar to Nikki A.S.H. She wins the title. The first time she defends it, she's going to lose it. Because name one person that she can feud with. That's believable. For her to get the win. I'm not saying she doesn't deserve it. I'm not saying that she's not good. I'm not saying that she's not. That she hasn't taken the business seriously. What I'm saying is. She is. She's outgunned by almost everybody on that roster. Becky. Carmella. Um, yes. She is better than Carmella. She is better than Carmella. She can size up with Becky. Skill wise no. She can size up. I didn't say skill. I said okay. size up. Okay. Bianca, she can't size up. Bianca is Bianca can size up with the guys for all we know. Yeah. Okay. Rhea can size up with the guys all we with know. Anybody on that roster? Damn, damn straight. I feel bad for Buddy Murphy at night. Um, <laughs> God. Get it, but you said it. Oh my god, I love it. I yeah, love it. you get? You get? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Um who else we got? We got <laughs> anyone coming up from NXT. I'm just saying Liv has that like tricky persona that okay, <laughs> let's be real. Let's let's move over to the men for a second and just okay. try and see where I'm trying to balance this out. CM Punk back in the day. Okay? Okay. In a straight up wrestling match, CM Punk is not beating John Cena. I hurt myself saying that. Yeah, that's C- gonna be really painful for you. CM Punk is much smaller, very skilled, but power wise, John Cena would destroy him. Real realistically, right? Unless it comes down to cardio. I well, think Punk's got we, better gas we all saw Punk's cardio in the UFC. <laughs> you said wrestling, get it? <laughs> this is what I'm saying, though. This is wrestling, dude. We are talking Liv Morgan in wrestling. In Liv, Liv Morgan in wrestling could beat Brock Lesnar if they wanted to create it that way. Okay? We saw Beth Phoenix eliminate Kane in the Royal Rumble. Okay? This is what I'm saying. I'll Beth Phoenix eliminate the Kali. 
Oh, sorry. El eliminate Kali. Kali. That was my, my mistake. Eliminate Great Kali. But what I'm saying is Liv Morgan has put in the opportunity and the or have been given the opportunity to put in the work that she could be champion for a couple of months. That's all I'm saying. They would have to book it right. They would have to have her against the right opponent. Yes. You know, those Carmellas who sneak down and trying to get a spur of the moment. Yep. Idle shot, maybe the Dana Brooks and stuff like that. Sonya Deville, even though I think Sonya Deville is super talented, they would make her job out. Um, and, and she could size up with Alexa. I, I just Alexa forgot about Alexa. Oh, my. So did I until like two seconds ago. Oh, my God. Okay. So there's a feud right there. And I think every pro wrestling fan is going to like have eyes glued to it because it's simp central fucking Alexa and Liv for the world title. And here's the thing. Bianca and Becky don't need a title to feud. No. Asuka and Becky don't need a title to feud. No. And Bianca and Asuka don't need a title to feud. They can carry their own feuds without the title. And there was actually someone, I can't remember who it was on TikTok the other day, that said, have the titles become irrelevant. Do they mean anything? Are some of the feuds more enjoyable without the title? So, I yes, don't I would, think they're wrong. No, because I would even throw Roman's storyline in there. Agreed. Roman doesn't need the title. He's just the no, top Roman dog. Has a, Roman has eclipsed the title. Titles. Mm -hmm. I, I think, like I said, I think the win over Roman is bigger than the title. Well, Kevin, how does that work if... If you want the title, you got to beat Roman. Well, let's say it's a triple threat and Roman doesn't take the pin. I still think beating Roman is bigger than winning the title. What was the last time Roman was pinned? Um, 2019? Before he came back. 2019? Somewhere around there, yeah. That's three, almost three years. Clean. Clean pin. Yeah. Like, we're talking about... It's almost like the titles are mid-card at this point. And we're talking I, world titles. I agree that they become irrelevant. I, I would change that up um, instead of saying irrelevant. And I say this with the Hall of Fame, too, because we got the Bella Twins and Charmel in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame has really become – the Hall of Fame and titles, for that matter, have become nothing more than participation awards. It's not a matter of if you'll become champion, if you'll become a Hall of Famer. It's when. Yeah. Because everybody gets a turn with the title. Everybody gets a, a shot in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame and the world title have become elite in the Attitude Era. It just gets passed around. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. You just said that. Hey, you said it was a shoot. <laughs> oh, Santi's going to fire me after this video. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Hill Kevin, and, and uh, Mr. Test's views do not reflect my own. <laughs> and uh unfortunately we are on straight shoot so our views do ref re <laughs> reflect the views of straight shoot a wrestling podcast <laughs> oh god okay so let's move into uh hell in a cell we're what we're about two weeks two we two and a half weeks away from hell in a cell yes. we got uh the th the the third time's a charm for seth rollins over cody rhodes um are we excited yes really yes because in as big a cody fan as i am i don't think this works with anybody else i think it only works because of the talent that seth rollins has when you look at the wrestlemania match it was very easy for seth to get to get around certain things because he didn't know who the opponent was he was a different mentally a different person when, or when he was in a different mindset at WrestleMania backlash. And now we're starting to see the cracking of the mind, the going insane, the obsessing of Seth Rollins over uh, this win over Cody Rhodes. He didn't obsess like this uh, when it came to Brock. He didn't obsess like this when he was the, the, when he rebuilt and came back at money in the bank. He he's never really quite been, this obsessive, this controlling, this fixated, and we're almost watching him drive himself insane. 
Are um, we are we get sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Uh but are we getting a, another rebrand of Seth Rollins and I'm going to give you a second question to that. Are we getting a kind of male version of Alexa with Lily split personality Rollins that we can expect kind of like do we remember when Charlotte couldn't control herself uh pre Ronda going away and it was like what was it the I can't remember the match but uh Charlotte snapped and it was a Charlotte was still I believe champion but she went off and like went with a full DQ but it was a violent DQ are we getting a potential version of Seth Rollins which is not fuck it I'll just say it are we going to get a Joker version of Seth Rollins well, let me let me attack what you first said uh Charlotte Flair throwing a hissy fit while she's the champion that really doesn't narrow it down too I got much. it but anyway um, no, I was I was being uh, oh facetious. I was making a joke. Yeah, I was making a joke because she throws hissy fits and she's always champion. Um, but anyway, um, yes, I I actually do. What I would love to see now. Picture this: we we kind of and you guys in the comments section love this. You ate it all up when we talked about Dakota Kai being the reincarnation of Lily. They they loved it. Now picture this: let's let's go on this other little detour with me, if you will. Let's say Cody gets the win at Hell in a Cell. We don't see Seth for like two weeks. Next thing you know, we got these random vignettes of just a guy in a padded room in a straight jacket, just rocking back and forth, just going crazy, just not showing his face, just his back, a little lighting, just so you kind of think you know who it is. They stretch the vignette, vignettes out not too long. Finally, he turns around. He's got messed up fucking pain everywhere. He's gone insane. He's fixated. He's got to get this win. He's completely wrecked, and they just let him run with it. Very Brian Pillman esque. Uh, Brian Pillman, I believe it was Stone Cold back in the mm. mid nineties with the in house. Remember when Brian locked himself in the house? Mm-hmm. With yeah, that that Brian Pillman sitting at his home, being like, I I'm not gonna mention what else was going on. If you guys want to go look it up, you can. But I'll tell you, that was some dark television right now. But we've seen. We've seen super athletic Seth. We've seen charismatic Seth. We've seen the promo genius Seth. We've seen dancing Seth. I want to see mentally snapped Seth. Methodical Seth. Insane Seth. And I think when when you look at Hell in a Cell and you can tie his mental break back to Hell in a Cell, it adds to what Hell in a Cell is. Yeah. No, and I love that. And uh, I I just... I just pulled it up because I saw it the other day. Um, but it was a Reddit form um, image of Seth mm-hmm. Rollins in the Heath Ledger Joker skin. And honestly, I am all for it. Like I would I, love it. I am mm-hmm. all for it. It is... One of those ones where you just sit there and you're like, yeah, this'll work. If they get the theme song just right, the, 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 not, not so much the pyro, but the lighting and the music and everything that ties into it. And he gets like this method actor kind of role where he's like twitching or, or pulling his hair out or, or well, he's, he's got the laugh already. Yes. He's got the laugh already. He's got that demonic you know joker esque <laughs> it it just works for him and uh let me i kev i i know you got your phone on you i've just yeah. sent you the link and i want you to look at this while we're on like that right there is it's, uh, we'll we'll put it up somewhere in in the yes yes all yes. day give me that all day twice on sunday it doesn't even need to be the full white face just a hand of white 
you know. And, and think of how many fan bases that's going to reach. Mm-hmm. Think of how many outside, you know, because that that's always the goal is to expand the business, right? Bring yeah. new people in. You put a character like that, somebody who relates to these other fandoms, and maybe they don't like wrestling, but they want to see how one of their favorite characters is being portrayed or this guy is like acting like that person, it brings them in new eyes on the product. Now they're talking about it. You're growing, you're expanding. You got Seth doing a role that he hasn't done, which as many character changes as this guy's been through, it's it's kind of hard to find something he hasn't done before, but he's showing shades of this is something he could fucking nail. Yeah, exactly. And I would be all for it. No, and I completely agree with that one, man. Yeah. And I think on that point, we're leading into Hell in a Cell. And next week, it's going to be pretty much a Hell in a Cell build. But I want to sit here and I'm like, what else are we going to get at Hell in a Cell that's really going to intrigue us? We've got, okay, we've got Seth Cody. Surprise, surprise, we've got Bianca Asuka, which personally, if they came with two managers... I'd I'd be interested in this because it'd be a war of words, um. But it at this point I just don't care. Um, what else do we have? We've got. We're most likely gonna get Ali and uh, Theory. Yeah. We're gonna build that. We're gonna build that. Okay. What else? Um, I'm 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 calling it now. This isn't confirmed. There was a there was a cryptic little tweet by edge i oh let's talk about that let's let's hold on let's get into that (laughs) i i i sent that to you earlier and i sent it to santi as well oh my god we have been calling this for three weeks is there a better fit no not at all like misused mismanaged the similar mindset yeah an absolute beast a workhorse, believable, intimidating as shit. I mean, you 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 want to fill everybody in on what we're talking about? It's your show. I'll tell you right now, Tommaso Ciampa in Judgment Day might eclipse the bloodline. Yes, I just said it. Tommaso Ciampa, Damian Priest, Rhea Ripley, led by Edge. Hear me out. WrestleMania 2023. Tommaso and Damian Priest as tag champions. Edge with his world title, potentially. Not saying it's going to happen. I'm just future booking. And Rio with the women's title walking into Los Angeles as the most dominant faction in professional wrestling tell me who's beating them okay. i can't tell you who's beating them i'll just make one small not even a small change not even a change but something to happen before wrestlemania let's say all that happens you have people coming out to challenge them for their respected titles the name of the faction is Judgment Day. You bring back Judgment Day. 100%. You bring back Judgment Day. 100%. But the only the only thing that makes me nervous, uh, Steve, the only thing that makes me nervous that I'm I'm kind of on the fence about. Now, I think Tommaso Ciampa is a great acquisition. If that is what's coming to pass, all we saw was a picture tweeted out by Edge. Um, if this does happen, my only question is, where do we draw the line before there's too many members? I think this is it. I think four, five at the absolute most. The only other one I can see is Alexa. And here's why. Alexa has that if factor. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Can you repeat your question? Shut up, That happens to me all the time. That's why I call her Bliss. Shut up, Alexa. So, I apologize. Uh, I just say Bliss, bro. um, With Little Miss Bliss, she has that if, if factor. Yes. She could be involved 
with the faction, but she could also have her Lily issue. And it's two string, one string pulling at either end. And she can't figure out where she, where she fits, but it could be one of those ones where we were like, what is she going to do? Yeah. You know, Um, I could see it working for that reason, making us wonder what she's going to do. I don't know if she'd be the proper, I don't know if she'd be the best fit. When I think of if, if, and I think four is a perfect number Mm -hmm. for the judgment day. I really do. But if there were the need to add a fifth, and if it were a female, when you think about underutilized, underappreciated, People who need to be brought up. People who need to be put on TV more. Shanti Blackheart? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, absolutely. I knew I knew you were going there. and she Either that or Nikki goes back to her roots as Sanity Nikki. Yeah. That's the only other fit. Yep. I, I agree. I agree with you on both of those. Um, but Kev, we're getting to the, to the end of it. I, I swear to God, this has been like the best back and forth that we've had so far dude so fun i need you to uh you know plug yourself but plug it in the the most heel kev way of plugging yourself go on bro if you guys watch wrestling and you don't watch me then fuck off <laughs> uh, no, I'm, just, I'm joking guys i'm joking i'm joking he told me to do it he told jesus me to do it. santi's gonna no. kill me no, i'm sorry I'm sorry, guys. It was just a joke. But seriously, guys, if you're a wrestling fan of any kind, uh, make sure you're following my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Kevin. We watch wrestling. We talk about wrestling. We play video games. We do everything you can do on Twitch. Not only that, but we give away some really cool prizes. Just tonight, a guy by the name of Chatter Bob won the WWE Heavyweight Championship with a rock side plate. So I'm going to be sending that out to him. He won that tonight. Our next winner could be you. All you got to do is tune in. Twitch.tv slash Kevin. We're live every weeknight at 725 Eastern Time. Um, we watch all wrestling. We play video games. Like I said, anything we can do on Twitch, we do it. We have a very fun community. We'd love to see you be a part of it. Pop in and let us know the straight shoot guys sent you. And we can have a conversation, give you a good shout out, and all that other good stuff. And aside from that, guys, I am Heel Kevin one on every platform except TikTok. TikTok, I'm Heel Kevin 2. Hit me up in the comments. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys. Dude, it is always a pleasure to have you. Guys, we are Straight Shoot, a wrestling podcast. You guys can find us on YouTube at Straight Shoot, a wrestling podcast. Uh, On most uh, streaming platforms, Spotify, Google, Amazon. We will be on Apple at the start of June. Uh, Some big news, like I said at the start of the show. uh, Merch is launching in June. Uh... A ton of new content coming at the start of June the second Santa gets back. Um, if you want to follow us on TikTok, if you don't already do it, it's straight shoot. And guys, do us a favor. Head over to the Twitter account. We are boosting our Twitter account. It is straight shoot PC. If you can't figure out what PC means, it is definitely not performance center. Um, we Definitely not politically correct. No, it's definitely not politically correct. But yeah, it's Straight Shoot PC on Twitter. Guys, go over there. Give us a follow. Um, we are trying to engage because new some new content coming this summer on Straight Shoot, a wrestling podcast, is going to be absolutely fucking phenomenal and surprise the hell out of you. Two guys out of just outside Toronto, Ontario, blowing the shit up and becoming one of the fastest growing wrestling uh channels on social media fan run mind you fan run we are fan run so kev like always my dude thank you so much for uh helping me take the wheel and do an incredible episode i look forward to working with you again santi is back in two weeks the boys didn't tear the asylum down but I do believe the lunatic fringe would be extremely happy with the way we controlled everything. So, guys. It's been fun, man. And like I said, thank you so much for extending the invitation once again. Like always, guys, throw it up. All the best. Take care of yourselves. Have a good night. See you guys.